Hey, hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's uh, the weekly webinar time, and we're going to talk sort of uh, radical approaches to marketing. We'll get to that in just a moment. A little bit of a uh, little bit of housekeeping. Um, I had a chance to bump into one or two of you last week at Microsoft Ignite in Orlando. I was also at Smartsheet earlier this week uh, in the Seattle area. More importantly, next week, if you live in Austin or by chance you're visiting Austin, Texas, I will be at Spiceworks Spice World. And I'm going to stay over a couple of days and just enjoy the Austin City Limits Music Festival, ACL. So truly, uh, if, if you're watching this and you want to get together down in Austin, uh, one gentleman may pop down from Dallas for a visit. Uh, after that, we have Ingram Micro around the corner and, uh, boy, a couple of other things, Cisco Partners, and I'll keep you posted on uh, other endeavors that are coming down the road. Uh, but please be sure today to use the chat feature um, for, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Jenny, dog got it. One of those days, use the questions feature to ask your questions and I'll be happy to recite those. A uh, little perspective on the audience today, a couple of interesting things. I just got a note from Larry Doyle, longtime participant in our weekly webinars out of Dublin, Ireland. He dropped a note about an hour ago. Um, he is down in Spain in a storage company, a backup storage company that uh, grew with us in the early days, is having an EMEA conference. So he apologizes. He's not going to be able to break out to attend, but we do have participants from uh, the Americas all the way through Europe, all the way through Asia. So good morning over in Asia, good good late afternoon, evening in Europe, and well into the good afternoon on the East Coast. Let's get started. We have a lot to cover. So I can never recall, my friend uh, Matthew, if I'm if you're Matt number one or Matt number two. So <laughs> I, I like to call myself Matt number one. I don't know if my friend uh, Matt would agree with that, but uh, he's muted. So I'm not. I'm Matt number one. Sir, you're always number one in my book. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd known you were in Orlando. I live in Orlando. We could have. Uh, oh, doggone it. Man, yeah. yeah. How about well, that? I, yeah. Well, next time. Hey, by the way, next time, because Microsoft Ignite is going back to Orlando. Whole nother conversation, but folks, they'll be in early November of 2019 in Orlando. And that's a five day technical conference. So, Matt number one, we will get together, my friend. Absolutely. It's a date. Yes, sir. And then we're joined by Paul. Uh, so, Matt, I think I covered off on most of the housekeeping mm -hmm. for today. So let me turn the talk and stick over to you. We welcome the new constant contact to the SMB <laughs> community. I want to emphasize that. And uh, I'm going to interrupt you both along the way. And uh, let's have fun. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Harry. Uh, I, I want to briefly uh, introduce Paul, who is on mute. Uh, well, he's unmuted. Uh, Paul is our group product manager uh, for Constant Contact. I, I don't know if I should say this out loud. I kind of have a, a nerd crush on Paul and his team. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm paid. Uh, I've, I work in, at Constant Contact for seven years. And yeah. um, especially with what I'm going to share today with how our tool has uh, advanced, you know, Paul and his team are responsible for it. So when I have to go talk about Constant Contact every day, um, the things that they're doing, the work that they're doing, makes my job easy. So uh, with that, welcome, Paul. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate that. Don't <laughs> worry, I have a, uh, a speaker crush on you. That's good. Oh, hey. Both ways. Awesome. Well, uh, Harry, I'm going to go ahead and just get into just a little bit of high-level just agenda stuff here. So I'm going to introduce everybody to Constant Contact because my assumption is this audience is probably going to sit in two different places. Either you don't even know what Constant Contact is or perhaps you know Constant Contact, perhaps you used it or were aware of it years ago. And so I'm just going to kind of start with an introduction to Constant Contact. Yep. The core of the presentation, though, is going to be how Constant Contact's evolved and, and ideally how that can be a part of uh, a product mix and, and a strategy in helping small businesses grow. Um, we'll also talk about our API and how uh, we've made advancements in that, and we've recently released some updates there. And then I'll talk about our partner program specifically, which is a turnkey program. It's really easy to add revenue passively. Um, and then we'll take a Q&A, but um, as Harry said, uh, we'll take questions and I've encouraged him to interject uh, at any time. 
So I believe we're ready for a poll. Um, this is actually designed so that I know a little bit more about the audience um, and we're really looking to know whether you currently offer email marketing in your referral mix. So do any of you offer email marketing? So the, the, the binary choice is there. Yep, yes and no. And folks, while you're answering, again, if you join late, uh, Austin, Texas next week at Spiceworks, I'll leave it at that. And if you want to get together at ACL, and then also, uh, before you know it, we're starting up the fall MSP Tech Talk. So you're going to get some communication on our sixth class fall quarter curriculum. Well, with uh, that housekeeping, Ginny, I bet we're ready to close down that poll. Oh, well, 50 50. Well, yeah, look at that. That surprises <laughs> me. Divided. Yeah, well, no, that's really cool. I mean, that actually helps me because. Um, when I show the product, and I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration today, uh, those of you that aren't using Constant Contact, uh, I think it's going to appeal to you. Um, let's go into poll number two, Jenny. And poll number two is going to be, oops, I went one slide too many. Do, uh, does anyone currently manage marketing for a client? So do you, besides just referring, do you actually manage marketing? Do any of you actually get your hands dirty in whatever marketing tool 50% of you are using to actually manage their marketing? Now that can yeah, be actually producing their marketing or, you know, kind of high level. Yeah, that's an interesting question because, you know, just this week at Smartsheet, which is kind of a collaborative tool, um, and uh, had, had conversations about will the channel partner uh, take on increasing responsibilities as the overused term trusted business advisor? Will they get involved? in some of the business activities uh, based on technology. Um, and, and I answer yes, but I'm actually, I'm not allowed to vote. Look at that. I can't even, I, I'm not <laughs> eligible for the sweepstakes, grand prize or to vote. <laughs> All right, Jenny, let's go ahead and close that one down. And there we go. Okay. And I suspected that I'm actually pretty interested in that 17%. Well, I asked this question in particular because constant contact in our, in our, our partner program offers a variety of different levels of involvement on your part. It can be extremely passive where you're just completely referring. Um, but for those of you that uh, do have a marketing background or a marketing bent or want to offer marketing, there's additional advantages from an income standpoint. Uh, if, if that's something you choose to do, you're not required yeah. to do it. <laughs> So with that, let me just introduce Constant Contact for those of you that are unfamiliar with us or perhaps um, only know of us you know, in a, in a small way. So Constant Contact, fairly we're known as an email solution for small businesses and nonprofits. Yep. Um, it, it's a, it's a easy, and I'm gonna actually continuously use this as a theme, Harry, where, and, and what, I'll kind of go back to my, uh, my nerd crush on Paul and his team. You know, when it comes to software, um, it can be, I'm going to use the word easy. It's not easy at all. But, you know, you, you can write software. But to write software that's intuitive to a layperson is actually really hard. You know, if somebody sits behind a computer without a, a technical background and even without a marketing background, yeah. um, it can be overwhelming to that end user. Um, and ultimately, if they have trouble understanding the interface and understanding why they should do something in the UI, then you've lost that that opportunity to help them grow and you know you have also lost that revenue opportunity so uh our email tool is not only fantastic for small businesses and nonprofits to actually reach out to their subscriber base their customer mix their leads but it's easy to use and as you'll see in the demo and as paul will talk about a little bit with the direction our product is, has gone through in the last two years and where it's going it's really, I have to assume, and Paul can, can enlighten us on this, it, it's a real challenge to enable a small business to do things like set up automation, set up segmentation, yeah. set up personalization, and have them do it in a very easy, intuitive way. And so that's what we're best known for. And I want to call attention to, and we do have a variety of other tools, and I'm going to show that a little bit later, but uh, just the ROI on email marketing. You know, when I share a statistic like that in front of a live audience, usually there's a little bit of a murmur or something of that nature. And it's not really a surprise because Constant Contact, we're permission-based, meaning that the end user must have permission to get the email address and use it. Yeah. And so if I'm a small business, and we'll just use a mom and pop restaurant, right? Uh, odds are I got that email address because people went to my website, 
they went to social media. They actually came in the restaurant and joined the list. They know the restaurant. They probably shop there. And so the ROI is not really a big surprise because these are people that are already somewhat predisposed to that small business. It's not a shock. Um, and so all it takes is a little bit of email cajoling, if you will, to get people to actually interact and do what we want them to do as a small business. But the last point I really want to zero in on, the big differentiator between Constant Contact and other uh, software in this space is our amazing customer support. Yeah. Uh, we have US-based customer support and we do customer support, of course, via phone, but we also do it via uh, a chat and we have social media customer support. But we also have people in the field, in market, um, because we believe not only in supporting technical questions, which is you know most what most people think of as support, but we also help them with, with marketing advice, education, and training. Because for a small business, uh, you know, as I alluded to before, Harry, you know, getting them to actually use a tool, that's one piece, but getting them to understand why they need to is a whole different ball of wax. And, you know, talking to a small business about automation, it's a really important part to helping a small business grow or segmentation, which is cutting a list into smaller groups. The education is the key thing and why Constant Contact's been around for 20 years is that we really believe in taking support beyond just technical support, but into education. Now, go ahead, Harry. Well, yeah, I question there on, uh, so I, I do believe that ROI number, I mean, and, and I, I would kind of frame it up differently, but, you know, for all the, you know, emails I send out, and I, I'm just gonna kind of think of my personal emails coming out mm -hmm. of Outlook, but, you know, there's that one email to that one client where it results in a large um, purchase order. I mean, you know, and, and what did that really cost me? And again, it's not a perfect example, but it shows the power of email. And there's just that one email that results in a handsome purchase order for our company. And I'm like, you know, that's powerful. I mean, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, well, for most small businesses, it doesn't take very much to not only yeah. recoup their investment, but to go well beyond that. And with a tool like Constant Contact, not to besmirch Outlook and Gmail and all those tools, but with a tool like Constant Contact, of course, you get the reporting analytics in the back end, right. seeing right. who They're, opened yeah, and who clicked. Now. Yeah. And, and, but, um, Go no, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> and of course, it gives people, you know, we don't want people to unsubscribe, but it does give people the ability to opt out rather than mark an email as spam. So um, with that, let me actually turn to Paul a little bit because I want to talk about, I keep talking about where Constant Contact has evolved. So, yeah. you know, software, they go through iterations every month or so where there's either patches or, you know, small updates or feature ads. Uh, but a couple of years ago, Constant Contact, and, and this was really an exciting time for me in my seven years, they completely ditched the previous product. I mean, we just started from scratch. Um, and the new version, what we call 3GE, which is what I'm gonna probably call it for the rest of the afternoon. Um, okay. 3GE is really a very, very powerful tool. And so I want Paul to talk a little bit about it because he's been involved in actually building this fantastic feature set. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Um, yeah, uh, you know, the, the scary thing is, is that software doesn't live forever. So, you know, over time, we, we you know, you, you build the code from scratch from the, with the greatest intentions. Um, do you want it to perform a set list of requirements or you kind of know where it's going to go? Uh, and then uh, new requirements emerge and then you have enhancements, and feature requests, and, and it keeps bulking on or adding on to it. And every new feature request results in exponentially more things to regression test. So then at some point it becomes the point where you um, can't physically put something else on it without um, um, touching something else, touching something else. There, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Harry, we can hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Great, Paul. It looks like right. Harry's video is frozen. Okay. Um, and the other part is, is that there's uh, environment changes. Environment changes and landscape changes. There's new operating systems and new browser versions. And um, you know the landscape changes over time, so um, uh, it also comes down to a question of whether you do refactor or rebuild. Um, so that's where we took a look at the depending requirements, and we decided that we were going to embark on a completely new editor, um, uh, specifically one that would be able to to create um, mobile responsive emails. 
And that's what led us to 3GE. And with 50% generation. or more of a typical small business audience opening that email on a, on a mobile device, this has become a, a really key issue. And, you know, going into my, my speaking career at Constant Contact, the one piece that small business doesn't seem to understand is the importance of designing for mobile first. I see so many emails that are really long in content and have multiple columns and lots of images and may not even be mobile not not only mobile friendly but mobile responsive and so our tool our our main editor um the core product is really centered and cemented around that mobile optimization i want to pause here and see if harry is back and connected jenny it, it sounds like we lost harry so i'm going to just continue and hopefully harry can get reconnected um speaking of our third generation editor just some high level things so you know, without knowing everybody the way that Harry does, that's on this call. Um, and Paul, I'm going to mute you just real quick. Oh, I can't do that from here. Just uh, know I can hear that. Perfect. So without knowing everybody on this call the way that Harry does, um, seems to know everybody pretty personally. Um, I'm talking so much about this editor because if you decide to become a partner with us, I want you to feel confident in the tool that you would be sharing out. And so some statistics here from Measure Measuring You, a study that uh, was done on us, is that um, our editor is really well received by small businesses. So first time users, somebody sitting behind a computer trying to do email marketing themselves, prefer us four to one over our top competitors. First time users prefer creating emails in constant contact nearly 10 to one. And that really comes to what uh, into what Paul and his team has done. Again, that idea of creating a user interface that's a delighter, that's easy to use, but that also produces results is fast. Compared to our top competitors, 72% of first-time users find Constant Contact's email editor to be the easiest to use. And when choosing between that email editing UI, first-time users are much more likely to recommend Constant Contact than our closest competitor. So with our new user interface, with our new constant contact, for lack of a better word, there's three big pieces that strategically have gone into the tool. And uh, I, I'm going to kind of read through these, but I want Paul to add some color to it. So first is automation. We do deliver automation in three key areas, and we're actually uh, going to be launching that uh, fourth one, which is... Um, just flat out email automation. So you can actually queue up emails to go out to a particular list. You have join triggers, which will be, if somebody joins a the list, they could get an welcome email or even a series of follow-up email tailored to what somebody said they were interested in receiving. Date trigger automation, things like birthdays, anniversaries, uh, things of that nature. And um, without letting the cat out of the bag too much, we're actually delivering uh, click, seg uh, click automation click trigger automation, which is when somebody clicks on a link in an email, that could trigger an automated response as well. Around personalization, we now personalize the subject line, the email body, and soon we'll be delivering dynamic content personalized to the receiver, meaning that a person, a small business can sit behind their computer, write one email with different areas of the email to be delivered to the receiver based on certain criteria like zip code or uh, job title, something of that nature. And lastly, segmentation, the idea of taking a, a large list and breaking it up into smaller lists of like-minded people or like geographic areas or gender or something of that nature. And we do that through click segmentation, meaning that if somebody clicks on a link in an email, they could automatically be segmented into a sub list and user defined segmentation, which is based on the user actually saying, I want to segment out people that have taken this action in the past or that action in the past. And I want Paul to talk a little bit about how these pieces fit into our tool now and kind of where our roadmap is going with this stuff yeah um, so the market email marketing is evolving just as we speak uh, in the past it was um, it was a one-to-many communication platform uh, where you would uh, craft one message and you would blast it to as many people as you possibly could in the hopes of um, uh, getting some people to convert um, the landscape is changing there too. Um, it's now we're going into one to some, and in many cases, one to one. Um, one to some would be in your segmentation case, is where you're narrowing to a specific target and you're um, uh, only focusing on those for your marketing campaigns. Um, so you have a higher conversion rate. 
Um, and the same thing with uh, one-to-one -one emails. It's it's highly personalized. It's uh, from uh, you to that person. But the pro the important part is that it's automated, so that it's hands off for you. So it, um, the recipient gets that feel that they are having a, a personal relationship with you, but it is actually um, automated. Um, and that's the trends in the industry right now. Um, uh, it's uh, it's factoring that way, and we're moving along with it. Well, and with those trends in the gentlemen. industry, hey, Harry, well, you're back. Yeah, I'm I'm back. I, you know, I I I think what happened is I I took that blue Yeti mic to that conference I covered earlier this week, and <laughs> I think it, it's just tired. So I'm I'm <laughs> back on phone. I'm back on video. Forgive me if you have any questions that I missed. Please ask. But I'm enjoying the conversation. I have a couple questions before this slide goes away. But please continue. Well, I was just going to just kind of add a little color to what Paul just said, which is thanks to especially social media, people are expecting tailored messages. You know, audiences are just getting more and more sophisticated. And that one too many philosophy, that newsletter going out to everybody with, you know, 10 different potential subject matters, isn't really going to resonate with an audience anymore. But if you design content right. that is resonant to them, you're more likely to get the conversion. You had some questions, Harry? Well, yeah, and 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 again, I'm just kind of shooting from the hip, especially now that I'm now that I'm back. And <laughs> uh, do, do do you have? Uh, yeah, I was talking to myself there for a little while. Um, but do you have the ability? And I I do not know, but I believe I've seen emails fly by in the past where there can be like a little video window. Um, mm -hmm. do, do you have that capability? And and maybe I'm making that up in my own mind. Oh, um, uh, yes and no. I'll let Paul actually talk about the technical issue there. Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, in most email clients, they don't support a video playing in the email. Uh, so what we do okay. is we would put in uh, an animated GIF to make it appear as if the video is playing there. And then once you click on that animated GIF, then it would go to a website with video plays. That said, um, there is emerging language and uh, newer email clients that will be able to support emails playing um, or videos playing in the email. Um, so yeah. we were actually partnering with um, a, a well-known email uh, <laughs> provider um, to uh, to support that, um, and it's a in a language called AMP. So yeah, we're working alongside with them to 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 flush out that new technology. Yeah, yeah, because that's uh, that's an exciting area. And then on the automation portion at the top of the screen, mm -hmm. um, and and I suspect this does not exist but you know one of the nice things in an organization when you have sort of a a wiki data store is uh bob the employee could join our company this past monday let's say yep. and bob would have the ability to go and see prior conversations that are relevant and you know email often starts at a point in time so for bob the email experience would start on Monday forward, and we would then have to direct them to the wiki or some kind of data store to see, you know, history. Um, and when you talked about like a, a, a join trigger and a click trigger, can okay. I programmatically have selected past emails or conversations sent to the customer or Bob, the new employee? I, I do not know. Yeah, um, it's a great use case. Uh, typically, in that in that one is it's like a, an onboarding campaign. Um, so there are certain things that you want to expose them to over a period of time. So you would set that up in advance and say, okay, for week one, these are the places that you should be looking and trying to get up to speed. And then in week two, you need to do your one-on-ones with um, with people within the organization. Here are the people that you need to talk to. Um, so yeah, setting up in advance so for every new employee, they already have this um, this onboarding sequence that they're going to go through. And another example okay. I'll show you, Harry, that kind of fits into what you looked at is our user-defined segmentation. So you could look at past behavior and um, and determine a future follow-up based on that past behavior. So if you know that you had a particular link in an email um, and you wanted to follow up with people that clicked in you know, that particular email, then you know something about them because you know what was in that particular email and you could send them a follow follow up information yeah. either well you know um, live or you could actually set that up as automation. And and then I have a, a, a an interesting story on segmentation. Um, it's a, a a fellow publisher in the industry, longtime publisher of yesteryear in the uh, the the Windows realm, and the founder set up 
his uh, data capture, if you will, allowing him to segment um, based on area code and not zip code. And that all made sense at the time, but today it's irrelevant. And it really impacted him because, of course, area code, you know, you, you keep the same mobile phone number and you move, uh, you know, down to Orlando, Florida or where Boston or wherever, and you have a 206 area code for Seattle. So geography via area code is irrelevant versus we're looking to you to accurately maintain your zip code, right? That's that's a better, um, what I'm trying to say, better variable to key off of. And so I just wanted to share that story, folks, as you uh, do this yourself or you advise customers, you really want to think about, you know, the multiple variables that are going to help you segment. And uh, gentlemen, I don't know if you have any tales from the trenches or advice on segmentation. You know, it could be gender. It, it could be, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested in maybe a war story or two about segmentation. Sure. Uh, uh, we can do it based off purchase behavior or anything else that you have in your database. Uh, and the key okay. for um, our solution providers is is really working with the, their customers to figure out what are those those um, those pieces of information that we can segment off of and yep. oftentimes the the small business is completely overlooking them um, and that's where the solution providers really come in in, in to help out and i've got war stories yeah. galore harry um so <laughs> most the first five years of my job i was actually working with end users one-on-one uh, -on -one for eight hours apiece in long form sessions and um, when I'd start to talk about a theory as, as elemental as segmentation, their uh, you know, eyes would get big and they realize they have a database. And again, I'm not talking to this audience, which I'm suspecting is more sophisticated, but to that small business audience, their eyes would get as big as saucers and they, they realize they don't know anything about this database. All they did was get their mm -hmm. first name, maybe, and their email address. And so that's one thing I love about, and I keep harping on, on the work that Paul and his team is doing with, with the concept of click segmentation, because what you can do is you can actually develop an email that's purposely asking or specifically asking for data. So if I put in an email with you know a couple of different buttons and said, you know click on your zip code or click on your gender or click on your income level or click on your product interest, by that behavior, I could then apply them to a segmented list just by their clicking. And once I explain yeah. that to a small business, you can see their pain kind of relieve uh, uh, that pain point start to, to, to become a little less severe because it's not that complicated, but getting them to understand it sometimes can be. And that's where that customer support yeah. really comes in. Yeah, it's, it's always a battle. By the way, before we get too far afield from the customer support issue, um, you know, with my personal interest in analytics and having been in a startup and worked with other companies, but I, I, I can appreciate the support because there are email solutions where out there that you're you're kind of on your own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of, and you know, it, it, I'm often asked about that. You know, the technical support, and that's why I led with it, is nice. It's great. You know, if you run into a problem, I mean, but the tool has become so intuitive now um, that you know, it, it is not as complicated that that technical support isn't as necessary, but it's that training and education that is. I mean, you know, writing a good effective subject line or what colors to use or um, doing things like segmentation, it's that education that becomes really key. Yeah. Would you like to see the product? Yeah, it's demo time. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this pretty high level. There are so many things I could share with everybody, but I wanted to kind of give just a general feeling for all of these things that Paul and I have been talking about. So you're going to get to see a couple of those items. Uh, I want to start here just in the create menu, uh, just to color in something that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. So as we talk about the opportunity for you to partner with Constant Contact, uh, you should understand that Constant Contact actually is uh, broken into two different levels of product. So we have our basic okay. email tool, which allows email marketing. Um, with email marketing, you get the ability to create lists and upload lists and have uh, um, list growth tools on your website, social media. You get a lot with that. But for a little bit more, a small business would have access to what's called Email Plus. And Email Plus comes with uh, uh, much more complex automation. So the base email program only comes with welcome emails. So if somebody joins the list, they get a welcome. With, uh, with Email Plus, you get the full email automation suite. You get a vent tool and you get a survey tool along with some in-email uh, 
bonuses as well. Um, but with the email automation, as I said, you get the list join series. You can have a welcome email, customized birthday and anniversary triggers. I only show that because that's going to come into play a little bit later when I talk about becoming a partner. Um, obviously, if you can get somebody into the more advanced tool, they're probably going to be more successful because they do have all these other features, but you know, there's a higher uh, revenue share piece to that. So yep. I want to create an email. And one of my favorite features that have been added to the tool in the last year, um, typically with a small business, they their eyes can kind of glaze over when it's time to choose a template. Now, all these templates can be customized to a small business, change the color, you can change the, the look and feel. Uh, but that generally intimidates them. You know, uh, a typical user does not understand hex codes or anything of that nature. You've mentioned hex codes and they look at you funny. Um, and so we created this piece called Brand Templates. And what this allows you to do is to take a UR, uh, a, a URL. That's oh, no, there, there I am. Yeah. There I was. <laughs> Paste it in. And what it's going to do is scrub that website for colors. It's going to pull the hex code colors, build the email. It's going to bring in logos and any other associated image. It's going to uh, look for links, uh, uh, social media links. And in the spirit of a cooking show, uh, I'm just going to rush that. And so this is what you would get, is the ability to actually take one of these templates and move on. Now, these can be customized. Uh, I'm not locked down to these colors. It's just, just a starting off point. And for a small business doing it on their own. And I just want to reiterate that, you know, as a partner of Constant Contact, the, 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 if you're just going to refer somebody and they're going to go out there on their own, the more turnkey this can be for that small business, the more likely they're going to be successful. They're going to thank you for that. And you'll actually get a longer term revenue share out of that. So the fact that this is so easy for a small business to wrap their head around and get them started, get them successful right off the bat is really key. As I mentioned, I yeah. can toggle between any associated images on that particular website, that particular page, and it found a couple of social media icons for me, but I can customize all that. And that's what I'm about to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and jump into our 3GE editor. Wow, I've never seen that before. That was it's, cool. <laughs> it's it's really uh, it's really heads and shoulders over previous iterations of Constant Contact for sure. All right, yep. so here in the editor, as you might suspect, right in the middle of the email is uh, right in the middle of the screen is the email itself, and just kind of high level. One thing uh, that I've watched small business get excited about is that we really unchain them from design standpoint. They can they can build the email the way that they think is best. We certainly will train them and guide them through education on some best practices. But in the end, they can literally, if they want a picture here, they could drag in a placeholder. Um, they want a picture next to that. Let me actually put it, I'll put it up here. So we'll put a picture here and we want a picture next to a picture. We can have a picture next to a picture. We want to have some text next to some text. We can have some text next to some text. Um, so you can put anything next to anything. Yeah, that's unlike a big some improvement other tools over there. the old uh, days. Yeah. Sure. Um, and it's it's really WYSIWYG. So, you know, it's, like I said, very intuitive to that small business. Um, and, you know, the key piece of all of this and the big reason, as Paul said, that we moved to this new editing environment is that mobile responsiveness to, to build an email that is going to be, and of course, I re respect this is a terrible looking email at this point, um, but the fact that it renders on mobile, that things stack that were next to each other is going to, without a whole lot of education, help that small business grow because, as I said, on average, 51% of the audience is opening it on a mobile device. And if it doesn't look good on a mobile device, yeah. you're probably not going to get the conversion. Well, well, let's, if you don't mind, let's, let's talk about that number um, a little bit. When I was mm -hmm. in that predictive analytics startup, and uh, if, if you've been to Seattle, of course, you know the Space Needle. Mm -hmm. That's a neighborhood called Queen Anne. I was right over there. And um, it's really cool. And we spent a lot of time uh, with um, analyzing mobile traffic. Now, in this case, it was a little bit different. We are, one of our big clients was a well-known large online university. And uh, email was one of the tools, um, but the mobile responsiveness at the end of the day for us was the form, right? That, yes, I am interested in learning more about an online MBA. Um, and, and maybe we can talk about that too, your support for forms inside of the email. But we were seeing, boy, that's a couple of years ago, but it, at a minimum, it was 60% mobile traffic. And so we had to really take that into account 
when we were designing the form. However, we delivered the form to that person because, you know, we, we had to get them, if, if they don't fill out the form, we can all go home, right? There's no, there's no event. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to tell you that our experience was at least 60% mobile traffic. And, and once I became aware of that number, uh, like when I commute on the ferry and then hop the bus up to the office or whatever, but it, it's uncanny how everybody walks around like a prehistoric dinosaur with a little little tilt in there. Well, I'm on camera, so I can kind of here. <laughs> now that I think about it, I can do it, right? But everybody walks around like some kind of pterodactyl or something, right? <laughs> so did, didn't mean to hijack your conversation, but that's a really important number about mobile. <laughs> well, and it's really, it's a really, it's a statistic that most small business just, they don't think about. You know, you, you have right. to guide them into it, you know, and I mean, the reality that everybody's used to seeing that crick in the neck person looking down, they're probably doing it themselves. It doesn't really dawn on them that that's that's their email readership. Um, yep. Paul, did you did you want to add anything to that before I continue? Yeah, well, um, coming back to the editor a little bit, it's uh, the focus here is about the inline editing. Uh, see, as Matt is making edits, it's happening in real time. Um, that is not yep. the case of most email editors out there. Uh, the other part is the drag and drop. So everything that he touches, he can be able to format exactly how he wants it. Um, so this is super easy editing, editing and there's no coding skills whatsoever. And that mobile piece is, is the big part is that we take the hassle out of it. Is that anything that you can do in this editor, we can make it into a mobile responsive email. Um, now, uh, for the recipients, um, the uh, the trends that you're seeing, the um, 60 to 70 percent, it really depends on your audience. It could go up from there um, that are reading these emails on a mobile device. Um, and then for your question about um, polls and surveys, uh, Matt, do you want to show a quick demo of that? Yeah, so around polls and surveys uh, with Email Plus, we do have the ability to do some pretty easy polls here. Um, so I can customize the poll and I can add in responses. And the benefit is, is this all shows up in the back end analytics for the email. So I don't have to have a separate polling tool to do uh, uh. something <laughs> like like a survey or a poll. And I was showing while while Harry was uh, was talking um, our. Um, RCP event tool. Now, this would not be for a paid event; it'd be for a free event. But I can create an event. This is all mobile responsive. I can create an event with uh, responses here and track the responses in my reporting. Um, and of course, I'll oh, okay, responsive. Yeah, so, so you wouldn't need one of the well-known or popular third-party event management programs. You could do this uh, here. <laughs> It depends on how extent, how complicated your event is or how much information you need or how much information you need for a poll. And if you're just looking yeah. for a simple answer um, that we can get from like a radio button selection, um, you can complete it right there in the email. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit um, more advanced, um, we do have an integration with Eventbrite. Okay, okay, cool. So the next uh, really exciting feature that's been added to our, our new editing environment and one that definitely resonates with small businesses is around personalization and split testing. So up here in the subject line, um, first just to show you high level here that we do offer personalization in the subject line. Personalization is a proven way to get higher opens. Of course, no matter what you put in the email, if somebody doesn't open it, then what's the point? So having that personalization be across not only those common uh, uh, column pieces like city, state, zip, first name, last name, but even uh, unique data that the end user would import um, can personalize it. And we do have a fallback. So uh, I'll show this off here. So you can see up here in the example, it's saying, Matt, of course, I'm the one that's building the email. So it's using me as an example. Um, uh, and if I was missing that piece of data, so if all I had if all I had was, oops, and I lost my email. If all I had was a person's email address, I didn't have their, um, I didn't have their first name. That it would reset and it would go to that secondary selection, which was friend, which definitely relieves a lot of end users because, as I said, when you're talking about battles in the trenches, most uh, small businesses only collect the email address. They never think of getting more robust data. So having that fallback is a big relief to them. Now, as yep. I navigate back into the UI, and I don't know how I got out of that um i'll show that we do offer emoji support and this one you know it's funny when you talk to a small business about it they kind of um they roll their eyes a little bit but emojis are a proven way to get more attention to that uh, uh subject line so we have an emoji picker built into the tool 
Um, and what I love about this is not only can we get better results for the audience, but this sets me up for my favorite thing that they've added uh, from the product team, which is the A-B split test for subject lines. So let me actually get yep. into that screen. And so a big pain point for small businesses, like I said, coming up with a good subject line. And we've taken a lot of that out and you have the ability to put in two different subject lines. So let me do a 25, 25, 50 split here. And what'll occur is that 25% of the audience will get one, 25% of the audience will get the other. Uh, we can determine how long we're gonna run the test. And once the yeah, test is so the done, the remaining for 50%. The election is four hours by default. Yeah, well, that's by design. Uh, well, six hours be the, the default is 48 hours. Um, typically it takes about two days for an email oh, to get all the open. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so two days would be the maximum. Um, and we're really encouraging them to do that because, um, you know, if they, if they, if they do it any shorter, the, the test may not be as refined as it could be. Yeah. Um, but the beautiful part about this is not only is it deliver in this case, 75% of my list getting the best subject line, but it really sets up a small business to really think about testing assumptions. And that's really important because if they start to think about testing assumptions, then a lot of the other pieces that we talked about is personalization, segmentation, automation, start to make sense to them. Is you know, doing things the same old way, the way that they've always done it for the last 10 years digitally, is not the way we probably should be thinking about things today. Yep. Uh, I want to head back to the email really quickly and uh, show you uh, click segmentation. Well, let, let me ask you a question on that use of emojis. Would that be a way to get around sophisticated spam filters that maybe don't like the word beer? And you <laughs> are having a beer fast and you can have the icon of a beer mug to convey the same topic. I, I, again, I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking free form here, but um, uh, that, that, you, that's you, my, I don't know if you know the answer, but that's my question. <laughs> you're absolutely right that emojis would convey um, uh, more in a simple image than they do in words. Uh, you would yep. take you three to four words to get to what you could convey in an image. In an image. Um, I'm not sure about the word free, or, or beer being um, uh, caught in spam filters, but free does. Um, beer oh, yeah. might actually pass right through. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, even better, that beer icon is certainly going to get you more attention because, you know, as as human beings, we're going to notice the image before we notice the word because we're lazy. Um, and so that beer is going to immediately resonate. That picture of that beer, that image of that beer is going to resonate and probably result in bigger opens anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and gentlemen, hopefully, uh, well, you're seeing, you're certainly seeing my bias to, I'm, kind of steering things towards the more analytics conversation than mm -hmm. the point and click pro and 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 i i'm going to stop talking we have 15 minutes left and so as usual i'm talking too much but this is good right. i mean i'm i'm excited please continue well you know <laughs> with, again the idea of me showing this to everybody is not so much well there might be something uh that interests all of you around this that i'll share in just a minute but ultimately i just want everybody to kind of know the tool i think if you're a reseller you, you want to have faith in the tool that you're promoting. I mean, that reflects your brand. And so I want everybody to just kind of get right. an idea that constant contacts evolve pretty significantly. I, uh, speaking of analytics, though, I do want to show you this because this kind of fits right into that wheelhouse, um, Harry. Yep. Click segmentation. We've actually talked about it a little bit before. But the idea here is that if somebody clicks on a particular link, we can actually copy uh, uh, that contact information into a new or existing list basically auto segmenting a list so again if we come back to the that that idea of people not knowing their audience not knowing their zip code or their gender or product affinity the idea here is that if they click on that particular product or that particular offer or that particular white paper we know their interest in that subject matter because they clicked on it and we can copy them into a new list or an existing list Last thing I'm going to show you, only because you specifically asked for it. So I hurried up behind the scenes, Harry, and built this for you. Um, okay. So uh, just to show you a video link, since you asked. Um, so if I bring in a video block, uh, I'm putting it side by side for some reason, hit edit right now, now opposed to what uh, Paul had shared earlier, right now, if I go... Um, to YouTube or Vimeo, drop in a link, it's gonna produce a thumbnail for me with the play button already in the black bar on the, on the top and the bottom, increasing click-throughs to that video because it looks and feels like a video. 
proving once again never wear the color white when on camera. <laughs> uh, you always want to wear the color black or some darker color, but I appreciate your effort, and that was fun to make at the Boston office. I, I really enjoyed that visit. <laughs> Well, what I want to do now is steer away from the UI. There's, like I said, a whole lot of things I could show you there, but let's talk a little bit about our integration, and that's particularly in Paul's wheelhouse. So I'll let uh, Paul talk yep. a little bit about our yep, API. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So for 2018, our focus was expanding our set of integrations with strategic partners and industry leaders. Um, and for that, it was um, looking at uh, our contact tools. How do we get contacts into our system? Um, for that, we did um, some work with um, Outlook 365 for imports. Um, we have an integration with WordPress for signup forms. So, you, uh, so if you have a WordPress site, we can instantly have a, a signup form on that site. And then for growing your audience, we did an integration with Facebook lead ads so that um, we can uh, post ads in Facebook networks and then capture those email addresses for people that are interested. Uh, we're also expanding it into other connections, uh, specifically with Shopify and Eventbrite. Um, so that you can connect your store or can it connect your event uh, bright account so that you can pull in um, content from those sites and also link in um, the, the contacts. Uh, so the, the uh, link between the CRMs. Uh, for 2019, uh, we're going wider and deeper uh, integrations into key verticals. Um, so, um, well, one of the things that we're doing is uh, we are um, uh, going into e-commerce and nonprofits, that means that we're going to have a deep integration with Shopify. We're going to have wider integration with uh, with Big Commerce and WooCommerce. And for nonprofits, we're going to focus on payment processing and CRM. So uh, Square for payment processing and volunteer donation management and list sync for CRMs. Um, and then we're also doing a uh, for uh, we are in, uh, here with your our API B3. It's about empowering in independent developers with a broader, broader set of functionality. All right, so that means that we, for this year, we built a new dev portal that's easier setup and management of API tokens. Um, we've improved the performance, the security, and the compliance um, so that it, it makes it more scalable for uh, independent developers. Uh, we've added the ability for to have editable custom fields. This may not seem like much, but um, it's huge. Um, now the the, um, the independent developers can call the custom field whatever they want it to be and not have to have a mapping file to say the custom field one is this in my system. They can just call it whatever the, uh, it is in their system. Um, we're also uh, doing some other things behind the scenes that uh, will actually uh, facilitate deeper integrations. Uh, we are. Uh, splitting out our server-side code from our client-side code. That's moving the business logic out of the UI and into our APIs. Uh, and that allows our independent developers greater access to product functionality. Uh, and we're also making it more extensible. So, so that means uh, uh, we're making it more easier to sync contacts um, across systems so that we can power our segmentation. We started talking about that a little bit ago with our solution providers and, and what you could do with your segments, um, but it's all powered by data. All right, so if we make it easier for you to bring in your data, then you can create these thicker, richer segments. Um, and the, we're also doing the opposite, going out yep. the other way, is, is cross-sharing the constant contact reporting to third-party applications. So if you are in a third-party application, you, you would be able to pull in the results of those email campaigns, the, the tracking well, information. Yeah, let me ask you there, are you uh, kind of API out to uh, Tableau or Kibana or Click or Power BI, some of the well-known visualization tools. Um, and that 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 would be way beyond the small business client. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. well, if um, we're not specifically targeting them, but we are making our um, APIs available so that if an independent developer wanted to build out something so that it could be fed into Tableau. Um, they would be able to facilitate that. Um, we have a marketplace where people can um, purchase um, um, apps or um, uh, integrations, and that could be one of them. Okay, and then along these lines uh, of the, uh, the, the DevOps, um, one of the really cool things about the Smartsheet Conference this week, and I've tracked them for some time, they're the proverbial the CEO Mark grew this company out of the uh, the yellow house in a neighborhood in Seattle, right? Just the classic story, and they IPO'd back in uh, late April, early May. And and I was talking to him yesterday, and he said, because uh, I asked him, I said, you know, boy, 
blockchain would be a natural fit for you guys as a public ledger to manage, you know, a trustworthy document workflow. For, forget about crypto. And he said, we're not hearing it. And and I said, what, what what do you mean? And he said, man, we only develop based on what customers want. You know, mm. that we're, we're, we're not hearing blockchain. Um, and that's a question I, I have for you, uh, Paul, would be, um, what's your development paradigm? Uh, customer feedback? Is it throw spaghetti in the wall? Is it all the above? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, well, we budget. We budget accordingly. Like uh, So uh, there are plenty of requests that are coming from existing customers. These are the features that I want, right? Um, and right. there's also new markets or new opportunities that we need to, to think about. Um, so we're always trying to figure out where the market is headed as well as uh, maintain our existing customer base. Uh, so yeah. there is no secret formula to it, but it is budgeting. It's uh, make sure you have investments in innovation as well as retention. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's make money. Let's yeah. talk about partnering and making money. Let's let's put this uh, all this into uh, your wallet, which is you know, Constant Contact, as I've said, has a a partner program, and it's a great way to not only just increase that passive income and even active income, as it turns out, some of you are actually doing marketing for clients, but attracting new clients and tying into our trusted brand, well known in the small business world. Um, a couple of high-level things around the partner program and what comes with it is you do get a dedicated account manager uh, based on region to help you succeed. So not only from a programmatic standpoint of helping you know anything you might need to know that we're running in the in the channel, but also um, to guide you through best practices and examples that they have seen or advised us. Uh, 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 solution provider to use. Um, we also have a unique support channel just for our partner, uh, just for our partners. So instead of going to the general line, you'd have a unique support group from a technical standpoint to help you. All of this comes with a client hub to manage. So you can not only monitor uh, the income and tie in your direct deposit and things of that nature, but you can also see all the programmatic stuff that we have. We have tons of education um, and programs that we constantly run, both incentive-based and also behavioral-based. Um, unsurprisingly, you get a unique URL that's going to be a referral URL that's unique to the solution provider. Okay. So all you have to do is share that out. And of course, Constant Contacts brand. Yep. Now, money comes yep. in a couple different ways. Oh, go ahead. Okay. No, no one. I, I just wanted to key in on that, that folks, you know, if, if you're like me, uh, Constant Contact was in um, early and 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 then and 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 I had this talk with Constant Contact. There was a sentiment that maybe uh, because they were early in the, you know, spoils go to the victor. But then um, it just kind of felt like for a while maybe Constant Contact was resting upon those laurels. <laughs> and and it goes back a couple slides to the different mm -hmm. version versioning uh, mm -hmm. cadence that you have. But um, this is a fresh look, and I just wanted to interject that. But please continue. Oh. <laughs> uh, then I've done my job. I mean, no, I've been with the company seven years and I can tell you it was resting on its laurels to a certain extent. And yep. um, and definitely why I wanted to just highlight a little bit of the, the stuff that's new. Um, as far as making money with Constant Contact, first off, if you get a new client, we constantly have quarterly rewards that you can get a $100, um, sometimes even more. Uh, spiff just for that new client. But the lion's share of the revenue, I think, is going to appeal to the broadest group of the people on this call is going to be our referral uh, program, which is literally if they use that unique URL to go to Constant Contact, we'll tie it to the solution provider and um, and and you'll get revenue share month after month after month from that person. And when it comes to that kind of referral program, we do all the heavy lifting, so we'll contact them, we'll coach them to success, we'll make sure that they are doing the things they need to do to succeed. All you have to do if you're going to refer them is refer them. Um, you know, if you want to do a little bit of setup and then refer them, you can, but we do all of the quote unquote selling and support. And that support comes not only, like I said, from technical support, but we literally reach out to them via phone and coach them through uploading their list and coach them through building their email and then continue that education through talking about segmentation and automation. So we support them so that they are a long-term client of Constant Contact and you, you get that revenue share month after month. And speaking of revenue share, here's an example of what, uh, what can be done. So if, let's say we sign up 10 folks to the more advanced email plus 
their list size is that average 500 to 2,500 email addresses. They'd be paying about $70 a month. That's a hundred bucks revenue share month after month after month going directly into direct deposit for just referring. Plus the, the added uh, uh, quarterly bonuses. Now, to my surprise, when we held that poll, there are some of you that are doing marketing for clients. That's where this piece comes in. I actually debated whether I'd even show this slide. If you want to manage their marketing, there's additional revenue to be had. Not only do you get that 15% revenue share, but then you are uh, potentially able to earn performance bonuses. So if that client succeeds, if they grow their list or if they're with us a, a particular amount of time, or if you bring in more people than you lose, the variety of different ways we do it, you can earn additional revenue, uh, revenue. so up to 15% more. So a total of 30%, not including that quarterly bonus that I let off with. What I think hmm. is most appealing to probably this audience, I hope, is that you get a free constant contact account. That email plus with all the automation, with all the segmentation, you get that constant contact account to support your business. Not only do you get that, but you get all the training and education and support too. And we actually drop templates into your email account. So all you have to do is drag your logo in, put in your phone number and hit send to your list. And we constantly update these templates around seasons, across new uh, uh, new product features, things of that nature. Um, so we're actually making this as turnkey as we can. And no matter what your business model is, we have a way to work with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 impressed. So let's check the the queue here. Let me back up. Let me pop it out. Hang on a second. Okay. David Anderson. Ah, is there somewhere where we can learn more uh, about how to use uh, all these various tools? And David, I, I would offer, and then I'll let uh, Constant Contact um, answer the uh, uh, that um, we, we'll put that in the thank you email that goes out tomorrow. So, gentlemen, if we could get the appropriate resources and links that you're interested in sharing to the likes of David Anderson, um, that would be great. And then uh, Matt, number one, if you want to answer it straight up on where can he go to learn more about these various tools. There's a lot of different places you can go. You can start with um, blogs.constantcontact.com where we have um, not only uh, articles, but then there's also videos and webinars that we host. Uh, we do uh, constant webinars onboarding folks and showing them all the latest features. Um, of course, we'll send you some links, Harry and Je uh, Jenny, to, to support the follow-up. Um, but uh, once you become a partner, then it becomes pretty intense as far as the number of places that you can get training and support. We do onboarding uh, literally person to person. Um, and then we also do constant uh, uh, monthly webinars uh, where we talk about best practices and product uh, releases and things of that nature. Uh, but we'll certainly get uh, him and anybody else interested up to speed in your follow-up. Okay, great, great. And uh, then we have Douglas Skinner uh asking uh, thanks for hosting the webinar how much uh do i pay monthly to not have the constant contact logo present in the footer of my outbound messages it's it's a valid question mm -hmm. um I, you know you got me on that one i cannot remember the fee paul do you know it's not much uh not much i, I don't right. know I'm going to throw this out there, yeah. but I cannot remember if it's accurate because it's it's rarely asked for, actually, um, and I'll explain why in a second. But I believe it's around the $50 mark uh, to remove it. Um, it may be as much as $100. But, um, you know, regardless, we actually encourage our solution providers um, to include our brand because it's a trusted brand and people know that they're not going to get spammed by constant contact. Um, but certainly, um, if, if you want it removed, we do have the technical ability to remove it. And that's okay. true for the small business, too. And it, Matt, number one, if you want to shoot that over to us by end of day, if if you have that answer handy, we'll put it in the follow up email. So that'd be fine. Um, and then we have Lawrence Steinert asking, uh, does the revenue share increase with upsells? Revenue share increase with upsells? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's why. I always encourage our solution providers to start with the email plus with the automation, uh, the more advanced tools. Um, one, like I said, they'll be more successful. Um, but uh, but yeah, as as they increase, so there's a couple of ways that that revenue share can increase. I mean, one is getting them into the higher tier product, 
But certainly, and especially for those of you that are going to manage or are interested in managing, um, the larger their list, uh, that's where we differentiate our price structure. So if they're growing, which is what we want that client to do, if they're growing, you're growing too, um, because that monthly intake would be higher and higher and higher. Okay. Douglas Skinner's back, and he asked, uh, how does Constant Contact uh, delivery rates compared to other email campaign companies like AWeber, MailChimp, Entreport, Soho campaigns. So looking for almost a battle card here on your delivery rates. I don't have that uh, uh, right off the top of my head, especially the latest. Paul, do you have? Uh, yeah, there's actually a thing out there from Active Campaign. Um, I think Active Campaign is at 98%. We're at 97%. And the other email providers are uh, anywhere from 92% and below. Um, and then the reason for that is simply because we keep such high uh, relations with the uh, internet service providers and, e and email service providers. Uh, we have them almost on a direct dial basis. And we have um, uh, stringent controls over um, who you can send to and who you can't. So we really do a, um, our compliance team does a great job of, of making sure that we weed out the bad guys so that the good guys can send. It yeah. comes back to that trusted name. I mean, we've been around and I mean, you talk to us being first in the market. Um, we do have that relationship with, with all of those, you know, those companies and um, they trust us to police everybody using us and we do. Um, and we see higher results because of that. All right, David Anderson asks, uh, what is the required sales quota for a partner to keep a free partner constant contact account? Um, there technically, there is a, I mean, there, this is a, a tricky question because there is a quota, like we want to see some business coming in, um, sure. but it's, it's more on a case by case basis. If somebody becomes a partner and just sits dormant and just literally does nothing, well, that's in nobody's best interest. Um, and right. eventually we may clean that up. I mean, we, we go through cleanups pretty irregularly uh, for a company of our size because we're more interested in helping social providers that obviously showed the interest and joined the program. We're more interested in re-engaging them um, and, you know, putting in tools that will help them be successful or giving them education that will be successful. So it's, a pr it's pretty rare that we actually um, – uh, kick somebody out, um, but we do want to see, you know, some behavior. That's why we're all doing this together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And folks, that brings us to uh, time. We're actually a couple minutes over, which which is always a good sign. And uh, Constant Contact, totally appreciate you reintroducing yourself to the SMB Nation community. I mean, there's there was a lot to unpack here today. <laughs> and Harry, I got an answer and, on that Twitter question if you want it. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's no fee. Partner support, our partner support team can actually remove that on paid accounts um, uh, by request. If you want some customization to the footer, so if you want to have a unique logo, then it's $99. Okay, okay, great. So customization, and we have a thank you uh, from Douglas Skinner. Thank you, Douglas. Thanks, Douglas. So folks, have a great, great uh week weekend I, I i just learned from my son apparently uh monday is a recognized federal holiday if that applies to you um enjoy the holiday otherwise i'll see you in austin texas and beyond thank you very much constant contacts and folks have a great day thank you harry thanks everybody